Uh, my name is Kelsey Leos. I manage academic web technologies in OIT. We're the folks who build EEE and are running the Canvas pilot. Just a quick note about our format. We have a ton of information for an hour of time, so we're going to move pretty quickly, but we're allowing a big block of time at the end for questions. So there'll be ample, ample opportunity to ask panelists questions about their experiences with Canvas. And with that, I'll hand off to you, Sherry Hi, I'm Sherry Bozer-Berry, and I'm the director for State and Academic Services at Office of Information Technology. We're still waiting for one of our panelists, so we'll be a little flexible here at as it shows up. I would like to start by thanking all of you for coming today to hear about firsthand about um, Canvas Pilot for instructors participating in this pilot that is displayed. I also would like to share just a very brief few remarks about the project and why we're doing this pilot. This year-long project comes as a result of many years of feedback from the campus and consultation with our instructors and faculty and um, the need for interoperability and integration with third-party tools has emerged to be a real two needs for the campus. We have been building e in-house since 1996. Many of you have um, used it and are, are pleased with e but at the same time, the core base is nearly 20 years old, and we face challenges as um, the technology keeps evolving and changing to keep up with that. One option in front of us is to rebuild Tripoli, to get away from our legacy constraints and expand our system's flexibility and capabilities. This would mean that we enter a multi-year project during which EE development has to be on hold. And um, another option is adopting a vendor-based product system that meets those needs more quickly and more flexibly. If the pilot in Canvas demonstrates at its core that Canvas is a usable and stable learning management system, and that the relationship with the instructor, the company that runs Canvas, our vendor, meets our needs and expectations, then Canvas may be a nice option to enable us more quickly to expand our instructional technology toolkit. Today, we're going to be hearing from our three wonderful panelists that soon will be introduced to you that are running Canvas as a pilot this spring quarter. Our pilot loop one <coughs> will enter of 2016 for the entire year, and I'd like to highly encourage a lot of participation. That will allow us to do a better assessment of whether Canvas is a good fit for Canvas or not. With that, I'll hand off. Kelsey, let's go straight back to our panelists. You can take it from. Oh, okay. 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 Um, my name is Kim Edwards. I'm um, in the instructor of the General Chemistry Labs, um, and I jumped on the pilot because I have a bunch of different third-party tools that I use. I use electronic homework. I use an electronic lab notebook. Um, I use uh, a message board bunch of different things and I was looking at Canvas as this portal that would give the students a single sign-on experience so they would go to one spot and everything would be linked to that one spot so that was my um, big reason for wanting to be part of it, um, it is to give that experience to the students. Hi, I'm Mariah Runnerstrom, and I'm an instructor in the program of public health and like Kim I wanted sort of one-stop shopping for my students so that they didn't have to go to turn it in and also to Piazza and to Tripoli and all these places. So I was very excited to take part in this and I teach a variety of classes. So right now three of my classes are using Canvas and all of them are slightly different in their needs and it's been very interesting. I look forward to telling you about that. Okay, I think we're syllabus. Okay. Um, Do you have one in there? I think, I think this think, is me. Yes, why don't you go first? <laughs> okay, all right, so um, this is just a sample of how you can sort of integrate your syllabus or to provide um, topic area content to your students. So um, one of the features of Canvas that I've really enjoyed is called modules. And I essentially had created this before in my websites. So I would have weekly um, you know, links to websites and downloads of the PowerPoint files and that sort of information for my students. 
Um, so here is just an example of my Public Health 173 class and how I'm using modules there. So every week I have the slide deck and then any links that I show to you know, video content in class or you know, homework tips, things like that, um, I provide the link for them um, through Canvas like this. So it's organized weekly um, and I always put the current week on the top. I think that's a little bit easier for the students to see um, and I think actually Ted, welcome, yeah. <laughs> is, is going to tell us a little bit more about that. Hi, sorry, I, I'm the one who's hopeless and confused about what building this is in. Um, <laughs> so I walk over to the Manny's Gateway and back after arriving here at the other end of the building. Um, so, um, actually, yep. yours is after Kim, sorry. Well, well, why don't you introduce yourself? Yeah. Okay, well, I'm Ted Wright. I teach um, a course for about 50 students in psychology right now. Um, and Actually, I thought this was in the modules It thing. is. Kim's are next. But Kim's yeah. next. Yeah. Okay. Well, so I'll, I'll get back to this. I, I would just say the one thing about Canvas that I've learned is Canvas is a great system, but it's a big, complicated system, and it's different, right? And so I made the mistake of thinking, I'm going to be able to breeze in here and figure out exactly how to do what I need to do pretty quickly. And as we get to, when we get to my part of talking about the syllabus, um, I'm now on my second iteration of the syllabus. It's still not the one I want, and I'm not doing the third one, although I figured out how to do what I want, but one of the things you find out about Canvas is that if you make a lot of changes, your students get, get notifications about them, and you can't stop it. And so if you want to sort of change the whole syllabus, you're going to get about 1,000 notifications, and so I decided I just wouldn't fix it in the middle of the quarter. But, yeah. Okay. So... Um, this is the first view of what it looks like when you log on to my Canvas site, okay? So I use the modules as the home view. There's a bunch of different ways that you can put a home page up. Um, you can put up just a page that has links in it. Um, I think that's something that you're going to yeah. um, go after. I just use this module view because it looks a lot like the lab manual web page that I had previously in my site's, um, uh, site's website. Um, so there's modules. There's a before the quarter starts module, okay? And there's prerequisites that you can sit, um, that you can set in Canvas, which I really like, because I have a bunch of things that I need the students do before the, um, I need them to do before the quarter starts. And so they can't get into week one. They can't see the experiment that they need to walk into lab the first week unless they've gone through that whole first module of before the quarter starts. So they come in, they have all the things downloaded they need, they, need all, they have all of the subscriptions to the electronic lab notebook, to sapling learning, and all of that sort of stuff. They've taken care of all of that stuff. They've been forced to by the pre prerequisite so that they, you know, they've got to fulfill everything to get into week one, okay? Um, so I've got one more. All right, so this is the way one of the weeks looks. So I have the experiment file um, loaded in there as a PDF. I have a podcast loaded in. The interesting things with the podcasts when they go into Canvas, the way that the UCI Relay works right now, is the only place that will show the podcast, will show the podcast in the window, is if you're using the Safari web browser. Otherwise, it just shows up as a link in an empty window. So that's kind of a, a strange issue. Finally, my students figured out that they could click on the link. Um, then I use the assignments, so the little green icons there with the A pluses. I use these to basically tell the students you need to go out and do these things. Now, if they, these third-party um, applications were actually integrated, the ELN, the Electronic Lab Notebook, and Sapling, they would click on this link and hopefully they'd go right into the problem or right into the Sapling website or that sort of thing. But right now, if you would click on one of those links, it would take you to, it would open up another page and it would be a link to that particular website. So it would send them out to that. Kind of confused the students at first because the grades aren't coming from Sapling or the ELN and going into Canvas. So they do their Sapling assignment, go look at Canvas and go, well, where's my grade? So I'd explain to them, we're not fully integrated yet. Um, then I have supplementary information. So there's PDFs there, there are links to videos there, that sort of thing. And then out, down at the bottom, this is one of my favorite things. There's TA information in there, as you see, and it says do not publish. That's a note to the 26 TAs that work for me. Um, and this is their manual. This was something that Karen suggested I do, which I absolutely love. So they're in a Google Drive. 
their password protected. I invited the TAs to the Google Drive. So there's no chance, even if they did get published, that the students would get into my TA keys. I just don't want them to know that's there. The TAs actually, when they go into the Canvas site, they see those links down there. They're able to click on them, and it's in connection with everything. So that did give me a little bit of that one shop, um, one stop shopping. Okay. So. Okay. So my course is a little different because it has a lot of readings. And so this is the old syllabus I had for this course, and this is one week, and you can see that they're meant to read, you know, a couple uh, chapters from the text, and then they're meant to go to a website and do some stuff, and then there's some more, and they're meant to do that, and then there's some more readings that they're meant to do, and these are actually PDFs that used to be in a Dropbox, but now can be directly linked, um, and then there's an optional reading. And so I sort of, I tried one thing, and then I found these modules, and so if you go to the next uh, thing, so this is that same week in modules, okay? And it's nice because it's got due dates and things and they can see what they have to do, but the problem is they can't see what the readings are, right? To see what the readings are, they have to go click on one of these, and if you go to the next slide, there we go. I keep thinking Kelsey's gonna do this and somebody else is doing it. Me. Oh, I see, you, you go, okay. Um, now you can see, you know, these are the readings in the text and then there's, because I wanted them to do the readings in the text and then go do this, this thing on this website, I had separated that from the readings that weren't in the text, and so they would have to go and open that up. And so there's no place where they can sort of get all these readings to be visible in one place and maybe print something that they put in you know, their, their notebook or something like that. And, and so that, that seemed like a problem. Um, if, if you give me this, uh, now that I understand what you were trying to give me, I didn't understand this. Okay. Um, so, the nice thing about this, this is the front page of this website. It's sort of like, the, this is actually a pretty good duplicate of the front page that I used to have on my old website. And you can see here, that there's these weekly assignments, and they click on those and it gets them down to the modules, just like you, you saw here for Kim's. And the, but the other thing that's nice, you just see up on the upper right here, there's a list of, these are the things you've got to do, right? Um, and it includes the readings, and includes bringing things to class and stuff like that. What, when I printed this, there weren't actually any readings. They, well, there's still actually a reading they had to do there. Um, and another thing is that there's this calendar. <coughs> and they can open up this calendar view and see all the things they have to do. But again, they're not seeing the details. They're just seeing, you've got to read some stuff in the text, because that's all the heading is that's listed there. And so, well, unfortunately, I don't have a screenshot of it, because I was doing this in one of these sandboxes, and the sandbox got deleted, but um, you can, in fact, create a page, just like the old page I had, right, for, say, week one, and it can have all the readings and all the details listed, and you can link those things into the calendar yourself. The advantage of the way I did it here was I made all these things assignments, and they auto automatically got linked into the calendar. But, so if you make them on a page, you've got to link them into the calendar yourself, but you get this page that sort of summarizes for this kind of course all this stuff that I think students need to see. Uh, and it really depends on the kind of course you're doing. You know, if you're doing a lab course where there's not lots of separate readings, then you know, the, the modules thing probably makes a lot of sense. If you're doing a seminar where you have lots of readings from lots of different sources, then I think this other thing makes sense. And one of the things I think we have to work out as a camp campus if we're going here is creating sort of templates for each of these different kinds of models and then instructions about if you want this template, these are the tools you want to use and how you want to use them. Because there's so many neat tools here, but finding them can be a, can be a real challenge. Thanks. That's good. I think you're up. Oh, okay. All right. So um, talk a little bit about the um, assignment functionality. Now, Canvas does have embedded within it um, all of these sort of um, test taking tools that Triple E does. So you can run a multiple choice questions, um, open answer questions, all of those sort of things. They do have those tools within them. However, a long time ago, I moved out to Sapling Learning because I needed a greater capability. I needed the graphics capability um, that Sapling has. So what I've done is I've used the assignments as a link to send the students out to that website that I want them to go to. So that's up at the top. It just says, okay, here, click on this link. It'll take you out. One of the issues that comes up with grading in Canvas, shown down here, is the students get to see the rubric, okay? Which in my situation is causing a few issues because I don't want the TAs to have to grade everything all the time, but I want the students to do everything all the time. So now I have t um, students going back to the TA and saying, well, 
the rubric says that we don't have to um, have anything in there for the observations this time. Well, the TA has actually got to go after them and say no, and I've actually had to come up with another policy that will take off our five discretion points if you don't do these things. So it's caused some issues there, um, and there's no way to mute that. Um, another issue with the grading is I've got 26 TAs, twice as many lab sections. They are scheduled Monday through Friday. So when the TAs grade is different, it varies. The grading that occurs on Canvas has to be unmuted for the students to see it. And it's unmuted for every student. <coughs> it's not, you can't have by TA mute something and unmute it. So it has caused some issues because we have this variability in the grading. And you'll have one group get their grades and then I have somebody else, my friend in such and such lab has already got their grades. So it's caused some issues. I wish that the sections could mute it um, in particular one by one. I'll just um, mention quickly, I don't have a slide for this, but actually I'm using rubrics as well, and, and I agree with you that that has been an interesting um, adaptation because usually we would give the students the rubric and show them where their points were, but now they really feel like they can come back and we can comment on each point of the rubric. So that, that creates an additional negotiation phase, um, at least in my experience. Um, another thing is, is that when you do mute or unmute <coughs> grades, when you unmute them, the students get an email. So I had this, they get an email about everything. Um, or some notification, and so I had accidentally muted the incorrect assignment, and when I unmuted it, they all got notified, and it was due in weeks, but they panicked, and you know that, that led to about 50 emails saying, oh, I forgot about this assignment, which wasn't even yet assigned or due. So, um, so, so I, I think that's pr one of the feed pieces of feedback, is that we, it would be nice if we could control these notifications, but just knowing that your students will be notified the second that you publish or unmute something is just power. That's good for you to know. Um, and that definitely works with grades. It is nice, SpeedGrader is a very powerful tool. They can upload an assignment, you can look at it right there and make a summary evaluation and grade it and move on to the next student, so that's nice. And I agree that with multiple sections though, that would be very challenging. Yeah, uh, I, one of the other things I'll say about um, posting the assignments is Canvas does have this functionality where you can set the day and time that the assignment is due. Works great if you're teaching a lecture class and there's one due date. Well, I've got 14 due dates, right? Because there's 14 different times that the lab section is gonna occur at. And there, Canvas does not have the ability to set it to say, due right before the class, right? So it's not, you have to go in and set a date and time. Well, I originally when I sat down, started to try to do that, I'm go, I'm gonna be here for eight hours if I try this, I just gotta not do it. So that would be one thing that I'd like to see Canvas improve on. Um, Can I ask a question about that mm -hmm. too? Is, is one solution would be to have multiple Canvas courses, one for each section. But I think it's also true that once you set up one section, you cannot just programmatically copy out of 20. And that's what you really want, right? Just set right. a calendar for one. And, and if I've got to make a Mondays, change, yeah. And then do the next one, you just say, and this right. one's Tuesdays, and that one's Wednesdays. Yeah, it, if I had to go through, because there's 14 different times, and, and within each time, there's four different sections. If I had to go through, and if I change something, like sometimes we'll find an error in the lab manual. We go in and change it. Well, if I had to go through every lab section and every Canvas site, I mean, I, that would take three hours, I think, to do something like that, so, yeah. And what, what you're really seeing here, I think, is a tension, right? The Canvas developers have this model. This is what a course is. Or actually, they have about five models. Mm -hmm. but, but none of them actually happen to map perfectly onto this model, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And, and, and you're, I, I think, you know, in, that's almost an inevitable problem. It, it, either you're going to make this thing so completely feature rich that, that you're never going to be able to find out how to do what you want to do, mm -hmm. or you're going to be sort of stuck where you're trying to sort of squeeze this, this cylinder into this square hole. Yeah. Right? I, I will say that running a large lab course with a bunch of different lab sections does make me unique and does cause for me and, and a few people like me on the campus some other issues that, that I've always grappled with in some form or another, even with Tripoli and the other things that I've used. So, yeah. so just going back to the grading, I, I, I'm doing a lot of grading for papers and I use these rubrics and actually there's a couple things about these rubrics I really like. I, I found that they were just, I mean, the, I found this whole speed grader in these rubrics just this, this eye-opening, you know, wonderful experience because I like to, mm -hmm. instead of, just sort of 
putting in points, I like to have comments for each of the rubric elements. This version has, you're just putting in points here, but, but you can have uh, a comments section, another yeah. way to do it. Mm -hmm. And of course, when you're grading a lot of papers, you know, often you want to do the same comment sort of over and over again. And one of the really neat things right. is you type in this comment and you click this little button that says save this comment. Yeah. And then the next time you come back to the rubric, there's this little drop down and you see all the comments for that element of the rubric that you've entered. And you can just select one and then you can change it a little bit if you want to, if it's not, you know, maybe not quite the same you know, for this person. And, and that just makes this kind of grading so much quicker. Uh, it's so much more pleasant than you know, either writing the same thing over and over again or, or you know, I, what I used to do was have an Excel spreadsheet and keep the comments in the spreadsheet and yeah. copy and paste them. And this is just easier. Um, and so th there are a lot of things about Canvas where they've really made great decisions. Yeah. Uh, and some things where they haven't made the right decisions for us, and then some things where it's really hard to figure out what decisions they made at all. But. I, I, will say, I will say I have my TAs, um, they've graded in on turnitin.com, they've graded in the electronic lab notebook, and they've graded on Canvas. They like grading on Canvas better. However, if you incorporate the turnitin, if you insert it, you are left grading on turnitin, which isn't too bad of a situation, but the Canvas grading from the feedback I've gotten from my TAs, they prefer it. It's just, it's a better, better place to be. Yeah, and as an instructor in the grading feature also, it does tell you these mini assignments are awaiting grading. So if people submit things early, you can start grading them early and it tells you. Um, so for me, in some of my classes, I, I grade just over the, over the days as things filter in and it makes the workload a lot more manageable for some of them. I think um, we're going to talk a little bit about communication now, and this is for my class. Um, I've been using the discussion board. So again, Canvas has all these options of things that you can use, and there are lots of different ways to have discussions or chats um, or even video chats, video conferencing with your students. I'm limiting it to discussions because I was looking to maybe take away the Piazza element that I had been using and have this be inside of Canvas just for ease for my students. Um, the upside is they can receive alerts about posts that they make that they're following on their cell phones, you know, text messages, emails. Um, the downside of that is, of course, they can turn off all alerts and never hear from you. And the other downside is that they cannot post anonymously. So um, for me, that has been a major problem. I'm showing you this. This is all of the discussions for an entire quarter in a class with 120 people. By comparison, I had well over 200 posts in Piazza last year when I taught it with the same size class. Um, so just to definitely, I think the main hindrance isn't so much that they don't understand where to make the discussions because people are getting to the discussions, finding it and reading it, and they mention it, but they don't want to post um, because they're, you know, I think they're a little bit timid to to um, put themselves out there. So that's been my experience with discussions. Are you using them? Um, and just to add to that, I also, not for this course, but for another course, was a Piazza user. And, and this thing about anonymous posting is really important, because one of the reasons I started using Piazza is I used Piazza in a big course, a 400 student course, yeah. and I used to have to have a TA just to handle email. Mm -hmm. Because you would get the same stupid question mm -hmm. in email over and over again. And I, I'll tell you, I don't have the patience of Job. I had to hire a TA who had the patience of Job to just answer this and not be chippy and you know, all this stuff. <laughs> um, and, and Piazza is really a solution to that. Because they can ask the question and other students can actually answer it for them. They, you don't have to wait for one of us to answer it. And they can answer, they can ask the question anonymously so they don't feel like I'm asking this stupid question even if they are. And so it's a really great system. And the fact that you can't do things anonymously in this system is an absolute disaster, yeah. I think. Yeah. Um, the, another thing that's really nice about this system is that you can create groups. And you can create groups, and they can sign up for groups. You can create groups all you want. I, I have basically presentations. They do them in groups. And you create groups. We have, and did I just jump ahead to groups? Yeah, well, yeah um, and well, here's my example you can talk about. OK. Well, that, that, I, I, I just, I'll just say, so you, you create these groups, and then they have a little group discussion space mm -hmm. where they can have their discussions, or they can do an online chat, or they can share documents, mm -hmm. all in the, just the people in the group. Right? And they can do it without having to know all of the cell phone numbers or email of things because Canvas handles all of this communication back and forth. Canvas knows how to contact each person the way they want to be contacted. 
you set up something, you send something to Canvas and it just goes out and you can do it for groups. I can now go and find, I can send an email just to this group, you know, just by selecting them out and saying I want to send an email. It's a great system. Yeah. Sorry, so you No, no. No, that's thank you for that lead in actually. Um, I, I love the group feature. Before this, I handled group signups in a few different ways. You know, many, many years ago I would have them sign up on a paper in class. Um, eventually it had evolved into a Google Doc that everyone had access to and they could just self sign up because we want them to choose their own group mates. It's a short term relationship. We want them to be happy with it um, and they can do the same thing here on canvas where basically everyone can say okay we're going to sign up for group five and they just move their names over to group five and sign up for that and then as Ted was saying they have their own space where they can discuss and share documents and that's not something that we can that we monitor and it's really convenient they've said good things about that uh, again the only downside I've heard so far about that there's always some downside is that some students don't check any of their canvas um, you know, posts or emails or anything, and so they don't, they've opted out of getting communication, so they're, then the students don't have any other way to, to get in touch with them because they didn't have to share an email address through um, Canvas. But I, I do think overall it was very successful. In my class of 120 people, only one person didn't find a group. Um, probably they just weren't paying attention because everyone else managed to. So I thought it was, it was a big success because that's more than usually managed to do it by the deadline. Could you say... Yeah you predict this business about opting out of email, what will that look like when students have three or four classes in Canvas? Yeah, I wish that they couldn't do that. I, I don't know all of the technicalities about it, but I know some, one student said to me, oh, I didn't know my group was trying to contact me because I asked not to receive notifications in Canvas. So I know that's one of the downsides. I wish as an instructor you could say, you know, I want them to at least get a weekly digest of what's going on or a daily digest, but, but they can sort of change that. Let, yeah. let me just add to that. Yeah. We have that same problem in our current system. We do, right? yeah. I, mean, yeah. I have to tell students, you have to read your UCI e yeah. email somehow. Right. I don't care how, I don't care if you forward it to Google or do it, you have to read it. And if right. you don't read it, it's your fault. Right? And that's what you have to tell them for this. Yeah. Um, it's in a lot of, I put yeah. it in my syllabus, that you're required to check. It's the contract of expectations. Because they can have this come wherever they want. Right. 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 Yeah, but you're, you're saying Canvas generates 20 times as many emails because every time you do a small Well, edit, well actually, they can go in and, and yeah. this is a very feature-rich system. You can, you can have different schedules for different kinds of notifications. Right. Or you can go turn them all off, and, and yeah. that was so the they could say and there's they probably yeah. students that just go in and shut them off. They don't want to hear it, you know, right. which is it would be nice to have a little bit of instructor control over some of that. I think, especially you know. announcements and things like yeah, that. Sort of thing. Yeah. Do you happen to know when they turn off their notifications? Is it just for the course specifically, or for all of the courses under their Canvas account? I don't know. I think it's under the account. I believe it's. Because oh. it, it, it's in the settings. For Karen, yeah. who has a thumbs up yep. and is telling me it's that account wide. So, yeah, yeah. account wide. So, okay. so they can, they can, if they've got four courses, they can shut it all down. Yeah. So they don't have you could write in guidelines for Canvas account settings into the syllabus and requirement of the course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, again, it, it kind of goes back to what Ted said. There's students that are going to, they're going to pay attention or they're not, or, you know, so. Yeah. There's only so much we can do to control that. Um, I, I'll just make one statement with the communication and the groups issue. The communication issue, um, the minute I found out that the posts weren't anonymous, I decided I'd stick with Piazza. Because with 1,100 students in a lab section, um, I didn't want to risk the email flood that occurs because students are um, wary about posting what they might think is a stupid question um, on, you know, on a site like this. Um, so having an anonymous... Um, removes that, and you get one stupid question instead of 150 stupid questions in your email. Um, and then the other issue with the um, using the groups, I actually have a grouping function on the electronic lab notebook. So it's not something, again, I was already using a bunch of third-party things, so I, I didn't quite transition everything into Canvas, um, as these guys did. Yeah. I think we're ready for questions. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Yeah, on that, you know, email flood note, is there a way to either, you know, uh, do this for them or train students to create, like, you know, folders in their email account so that these kind of notification gets to their, you know, certain folder and they can check it, like, once a day or once a week, that kind of thing, or? I, I mean, that's what I did, too. 
Yeah. To mitigate this. What male readers are using? How you do all that? Yeah, I mean, like the canvas notification. I mean, there's the. I just. I think that's easy enough to filter them out and. Yeah. And you know, label them. But it's also. I mean, given how, given how many options you have in those settings for which kinds of notifications mm -hmm. you want, how often, mm -hmm. you can do all that right in the front end. I was thinking. Yeah, but, but but they have to go in and, and, and do it, and it, that's something that they're not used to doing. I have a question for Karen. If does it when it sends out a notification, does it stack all the notifications together? Sure. So if there was ten notifications that were generated in a day, do they get an email with ten notifications kind of on it, or do they get ten emails? Depends on how they're set up. If they right. set it for a daily digest, they will get one They'll get, okay. per day. Okay. If they set it up to get a notification right away. They will get one per. Right. 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 And Karen, can you briefly introduce yourself? Because we all keep kind of. <laughs> 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 Sorry, my name is Karen. I'm the instructional technology specialist here. I'm in the academic web technology team. I've been helping a bunch of the instructors get their materials into Canvas and helping them kind of document the things that we're finding throughout the, the pilot. So. And let me just underscore that. <laughs> if you're thinking about implementing a course in Canvas, get to know Karen. <laughs> She's been very helpful. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I've been using Canvas for several quarters on my own now, not part of the pilot program, and I haven't, I've been looking into an extra credit option in forms. It seems that there isn't one. Have you found a way to build that in, or is there one when you're in the pilot program for quizzes and assignments? Yeah, I have assignments that are extra credit. Um, you do have to make sure that you weight them, which was something that I recently learned, because if you give someone, if someone doesn't participate in an extra credit assignment and you give them a zero because they didn't participate, uh, if, if you haven't weighted them, it actually will reduce their grade in the class instead of uh, ignoring it or you know, saying, well, there's no penalty for non-participation. But all you have to do is say, this percentage of the grade is extra credit. So you can have 100% be the assignments and then an additional percentage be the extra credit. Yeah, and that exactly the same way as we do it in Triple A. Yeah, just counterintuitive. Right. Yeah. I've also had some trouble with um, the grade book, and I was wondering if you had solutions to this. One is I've had a really hard time uploading grades from like Excel oh, into it. Yeah. Just to click it. Yeah, that was very easy in Triple A. Yeah. Yep. I, have I agree with you. I figured out how to make it work in Canvas, and then um, some of my assignments are uh, that they have say 10 assignments over the quarter, but they get one free miss. And I can't, is there a way to tell Canvas, I can, I, I weight those all, they're worth 15%, but then they get one free hmm. miss. So I, I don't figure out a way to I can answer the first question, right. but not the yeah, second one. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Okay, so for the first, I had the same problem because I have a weekly assignment in one of my classes. And um, the best thing you can do for yourself is to actually download, there's an option to download the spreadsheet and then use that. It downloads it as a comma separated value and it has all of the required columns that they're looking for when you upload. The, so there's five columns that are required that allow you to upload and they have to be there. Um, and something happened last week where a TA thought she was helping me by deleting those columns. And so, but they're very important columns. Um, so we, we deleted them from our main spreadsheet, but I put them back. Because otherwise it will, not see, um, it will not see the assignment when you upload it. It says it's an invalid file. I'm sure you're getting that. Yeah, so just download what they have and then you can use that going forward. And it's a little confusing because their student ID number <laughs> which they actually get from UCI is not the same student ID number we're used to using. Right. Um, so it doesn't match on that. I agree, AAA gradebook is so much easier. It turns out yeah. that UCI <laughs> has a whole other set of ID numbers that we don't know about. <laughs> the, 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 the student ID numbers that we know about map into. Right. Um, so yes. Karen, you can take this. The other answer about um, being able to drop an assignment, um, if you set up assignment categories within your Canvas course space, you can set it up so that an assignment will, will a category will drop an assignment. And some of the functionality that Canvas provides, it will let you do things like drop the lowest score or drop, you know, the last score. Um, it will also let you say, okay, within this assignment, say I've got a um, category that is all of my tests, but I don't want under any circumstances the final test to be dropped. You can set up a category so that it will look at every other assignment in that category except the final to see which ones it can drop. So it, it gives you a, a fair amount of flexibility. Yeah. Can you clarify the ID number? So is this automatic? Because one of the issues mm -hmm. I struggle with sapling and master in chemistry and things like that, that they put all kinds of things 
as ID numbers <laughs> and then I have to figure out who is who. Right. Is it, if it, it has to be done automatically, right? Because if, can, if Canvas is integrated, it's... Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so the thing that's tricky is these, these extra numbers have pretty much always existed for the students. It's just you guys don't always see them as instructors. So they, they currently exist in all the systems that you're currently using. It's, they're just not visible to you. So as, as Mariah was saying, if you go into your gradebook and you export your gradebook, all of those ID numbers will become transparent to you. You will see all those numbers. Probably more than you really want or really care about. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> but they will be there for you if you need to reference them. But, but the mapping those into the student ID number that we know yeah. is still a problem. And one of the things that you get in the gradebook is the UCN ID. Yeah. Yes. So and that's, that, that's the key that I think that can be used. Me too, yeah. Uh, one of the things that, that Canvas has that, that I've actually found useful is they have an uh, attendance function. Um, so running a lab program, especially the first couple weeks, the students need to come in and the TAs need to take role, make sure everybody's in there. So it's worked out really nicely. Instead of having to kill trees and have the stock room print out more paper, the TAs just go in there with their laptop and they can actually take role um, within the system. So it's sort of one of the registrar issues. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, regarding the anonymous issue, uh, wouldn't it be possible to add, just add a dummy user that everyone has a password to and maybe they could sign on? And mm. That would be delightful, but I don't, I don't know. <laughs> well, you know what, one of the problems with that would be, when I use Piazza, sometimes there's inappropriate posts. Yeah. So I, as the instructor, can see who the student is and can email them directly and tell them to knock it off. Um, so if you have a dummy user, it might become a free-for-all. That would be the danger of that. And you know, the interesting thing here is, one of the whole reasons we're thinking about all this is that there are various systems that do various kinds of things very well. Mm -hmm. Piazza was all focused on this kind of communication and it does it really well, right? Mm -hmm. And there's other systems like Turnitin that you know do things like like looking for, for uh, um, originality and stuff. It does that really well, and so we wanted to be able to bring those systems together and yeah. try to get away from one <laughs> system that did everything really well, mm -hmm. right? Which was what Tripoli was trying to be, yeah. and was sort of bogging down in, in terms of being able to be. Uh, and so I, I think I think ultimately, you know, what you want to be able to do and what Canvas is meant to be able to do, because Canvas it is meant to be able to integrate with Piazza so that you can go from Kansas, Canvas to Piazza in just sort of one click, is let us sort of find the systems that do what we want done really well and integrate it into this one environment where students don't have to go out to lots of different places like Sapling and different things to, to do what they want to do. But that's, that's where we're going, not where we're at. I wanted to follow up on what you were saying about roll call. Mm -hmm. um, how, how, I'm curious about that. How does that work? Does it, the student, the TA, has to call a roll, roll call, or the TA says, "I'm doing roll call." Click in. I, I, the the TA actually brings it up and clicks. Okay. Yeah, and it's just a very simple. They they pull pull it up, and click 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 as they call roll. Yeah, yeah. It's not an electronic thing, which I, I don't know if you'd want that because then people would be there that weren't there. Right. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. The, um, the, I mean, along these lines, I found that Harry and I talked about is that the sections, the section note groups aren't integrated with Canvas, so it's not, right. you can't, um, you know, create groups according to their discussion sections or yeah. lab sections um, in your case. That is definitely something that, that does not currently exist. One of the instructors in the pilot has actually gone in and manually created groups mm -hmm. that are the same as their discussion sections. Wow. So um, this is actually another really good point to bring up at this at this juncture. Um, we've been collecting a crazy amount of documentation, and we have been communicating with Canvas as well throughout the whole pilot. So yeah, it is super tip. helpful for us to hear these questions from you guys, to know the kinds of things that you would want a system of the future to do, so that we can make sure that that gets kind of on our radar. Mm -hmm. Dee is waiting. Yeah. yeah. Hi. Hi. <laughs> I was just wondering, does uh, Canvas also show you the student's picture ID? Uh, because I see, especially in large classes, you right. know, if you are taking role, it's sometimes hard to remember names. But... So my understanding is right now this is an integration issue. It doesn't show the picture ID that comes from the registrar. 
students can upload their own picture. Yeah. Well, where, wherever it comes from. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Okay, sorry. It comes from somewhere central. It doesn't show those. But, but, but yeah, it they sounds add, like it could. And they add their own pictures, yeah. um, which actually are usually more current and easier for you to... If more creative. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes, <laughs> certainly more creative. Well, also do avatars and right, yeah, right, right, yeah. Who is this? Right, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's a good question. So can I ask a question? You were saying you put up a PDF <coughs> for them to do reading from. And it's actually not a PDF. It, 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 I mean, a, a kind of object in Canvas is called a page. And so you can create a page, uh, and you use the same editor, same stuff. You can actually copy if you have the page somewhere else, like in Word or you know as a website. You can just copy that whole thing and paste it right into the page. But but then what you can do is you can link parts of that page into other objects that Canvas knows about. There's also files too, right. which, yeah. which are, are the PDFs. Let me, let me yeah. ask the question first. Yeah. Yeah. You guys okay. Get into it. Um, <laughs> When you have something that you want them to read, yep. you, you mark it in Canvas as an assignment so that it can automatically show up in the calendar. How is that graded? Well, so, Canvas so, so, knows so, that they've read the page? Well, well no, so, so, so the point of my readings is I don't grade that. right? And that, that was the problem before. That I, it, when I entered them as assignments, they had to be listed as assignments with no points. right? And it was sort of weird, and, and again, as you saw, because of the way it showed things, they had to sort of click in to sort of see what the assignments were, right? In this, I can create a page and it lists all the readings, and I don't have to now call them assignments, but I can link that page into the calendar and say, mm -hmm. you need to do this reading by this date, and, and Canvas now doesn't try to track it because it's, from Canvas's point of view, it's not an assignment, it's not something mm -hmm. they're gonna turn anything in for. Uh, what I do is I actually have reading quizzes, and so the reading quizzes now um, are, are true Canvas assignments, and they have dates and deadlines, and, and that's how that'll, that'll so, okay. work. Okay, you create another assignment to quiz them on whether they've right. done it. That's right. Whereas everything before was treated as an assignment in my syllabus, and that turned out to not be ideal. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Any surprises using the app, either from the instructor point of view or from the I, the feedback I got was a group of students found the old website because it's still out there. And um, I think what surprised me was they said that they kind of liked the old website the way that it was formatted better um, initially. But then they got used to Canvas because Canvas is very linear, mm -hmm. um, where a website tends to be um, more sort of branches out like a tree. Um, so, so I think that kind of surprised me that, you know, okay, that, that they found this and they compared the two of them. And I, I think it was an issue of getting used to. Mm -hmm. Just like for you using this system yeah. will be a use, system of you think of getting used to. Yeah, I, I had the same experience. All of my students are seniors um, in their last quarter. So for them, they're very well steeped in Triple E and I think most of them didn't have a lot of experience with Canvas. So for them, just not navigating and figuring out where to get to modules. So I just have a little flow chart that I put if I say, You'll find this under the week, week six assignments or whatever. I'll say, you know, click here, modules, you know, module week six, and then the assignment name. And that has cut that to no emails per week about where to find things. Because um, I think they just weren't very familiar with it and they were missing things. It's a different interface. Things are arranged differently in yeah. menus yeah. and stuff. It looks different. Yeah. I just had a question. I've worked with Moodle and sometimes I'll put in something that generates a gradebook assignment, but I don't really want to be in a gradebook. Right. It irritates me that I can't mm -hmm. get it out. Yeah. Are you basically happy with how the gradebook looks after you've figured out how to post like reading versus assignments versus forum that you want them to participate in that you don't want to grade it? it it's very easy yeah. to take things in and out of Canvas. More easy mm -hmm. than a um, WordPress website, and a WordPress website is easy. Um, it, you want something in and out, you take it in and out. It's just, it, it's a couple clicks. It's probably where a WordPress website is five clicks. Yeah. So it, it's easy. Yeah, if you want the assignment gone, it's gone. And, and I do like that you can create an assignment, add a rubric, students just upload their assignment, it's electronic, you grade it, it goes right into the gradebook in Canvas. I mean, that happens really easily. And I think from an instructor and TA perspective, that's worked very well for us.
Whereas the one thing I don't like about the gradebook, uh, and actually I'm still using the Tripoli gradebook because of this, uh, in Tripoli you could for a course have multiple gradebooks. Mm. And, and the reason here. I like that is, <laughs> you've heard I have these reading quizzes, I also have a lot of activities that are graded, and so if you use the, the Canvas gradebook, it's, it's really wide, it's got mm -hmm. like 50 columns, right? And I don't want that. So in, in AAA what I do is I have a quizzes gradebook, and it's just got all the quizzes and then a summary for the quizzes, and I have all the activity, activity gradebook, and then I have a main gradebook, and it's got the summaries from the quizzes and summaries from the activities, and then the midterms and a couple other papers, and so it only has eight or ten columns. And it's a little confusing at first because they have to, you know, if they want that detailed information, they have to know to go looking at a different grade book. But it's a, I think it's a better way to organize that information. And, and unfortunately, right now, Canvas doesn't let you do that. Mm -hmm. Is Canvas open to customizing for UCI's needs based on your feedback? Have they said that that's going to be something that they'll work on? Oh, actually, yeah. on that right. um, so one of the things that we are assessing in the pilot is what is it like to work with this external vendor? Do they listen to the things that the campus is requesting or are priorities, priorities for them as well, or are they not, given that they have a huge user base and a number of universities that they're serving all across the country? <coughs> so we're not looking for any kind of special treatment from the company and structure. If they give us a lot of extra attention while we're in our pilot, and the pilot ends, we move over and start using Canvas, and we don't have that attention anymore, we'll have evaluated that relationship based on kind of a fake uh, scenario. So we're not getting any special treatment or special attention. Um, just like any other institution, we're negotiating with them, we're advocating on behalf of our campus, and we're also working with peer institutions who are similar large institutions that are using Canvas in order to find things that we all agree upon as priorities mm -hmm. and then advocate as a group. Um, so no special treatment, but we are advocating a lot with them, and we're going to be posting the results of that advocacy along with our assessment. So we will be disclosing these are the kinds of feature requests that we made as a Canvas, and these were the outcomes. They said yes to this, they said no to that, or they're working on this. That's information that we'll include in assessments. It's pretty early now to be able to say how that's going since we're just about five weeks into the pilot. Mm -hmm. Oh, and let's take about five more minutes of questions, and that'll give us a few minutes to wrap up and ensure yeah. that we end up there. Yeah, so um, Ted, you said that you were um, disappointed that you couldn't use Turnitin and then use the gradebook in Canvas. Uh, I didn't say that, but. Um, I I just started using turn actually turn it they turned on turn it in integration this week so I collected my first assignment through Canvas and it automatically showed me the overlap score from turn it in and when you click to grade it you grade it in turn it in yeah that's yeah right. yeah it'll, it'll, the grade I think the grade will go into Canvas it, the grade you use yeah. the grader in turn it in right yeah so, but you, you were saying that you like the grade book in Canvas yeah so mm -hmm. yeah. is there a way to um, make the turn it in information go to Canvas so you can use and that, that would be optimal. I don't yeah, know. I mean, it, there's a back doorway, but you do yeah. use the Canvas gradebook when you grade in Turnitin. It posts that grade to the Canvas gradebook, but your comment resides in Turnitin right. and not in Canvas. And I like the commenting system in Canvas actually a lot better. Yeah, and the student gets notified when you've posted comments if they want them. <laughs> so, so the alternative is, and, and I use the the grader in Canvas. Yeah, I download all the papers as a zip file. I upload them all as a zip file and to turn it in. Yeah. I don't even enroll the students. The students don't know about turn it in at all. I just I download, upload. It does the originality checking. I go look at that, and I'm done with turn it in. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so there's that back door that it, it takes a couple steps, but it, it takes five minutes. So. Yeah. With the grade book, simply you could have a grade and then comment, individual comments. Mm -hmm. You can do that. In Yes, but at this time you cannot upload your comments, which has been something every week. Um, I have to post the comments to the spree grader to the the grader separately, so I can upload the scores and then I have to go find the student and match up their comments. And that was over the weekend. Forty six comments uh, had to be entered manually. Um, it you know you copy and paste, but I want to make sure I get the right comment to the right person. So I, I do still think that feature about Tripoli gradebook really excels, and I know that's a feature request we asked for. Thank you. So what would be the optimal uh, <coughs> class size and format to try it out? A big class, small class, up to use of the users? I've ran into issues because the, the whole class versus the lab section um, availability of a tool varies back and forth. I mean, I'm going to continue to use this for the next course. Um, there's parts of it that, that I really like. Um, you know, 
I have problems looking at it from the instructor point of view. Like if I go look into the attendance functionality, I see everything and I open up one section and it feeds over the other sections and I can't read it. So I lose some things that only my TAs can see. I can't go in and see them. I actually, if I wanna go look up a student, I still go in through um, the web roster and that sort of thing because I can't see them. My, my TAs have no problem. Um, but I still think it's got enough benefit to it that even with a large course, it works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I've done a fairly small course. Next year I'm gonna do a large course. I, I mean, yeah. I, I imagine I'm going to run into some problems, and there are going to be some advantages for both of them. And, yeah. Uh, by then, Cam our implementation of Canvas will be a little more feature-rich, and that'll be nicer. So. All of the things that I'm not certain about trying, I've been trying in my 11 student honors course because they are very understanding. They don't mind if they get a lot of different notifications about things. They're all getting the notifications, and they've been very engaged in giving me a lot of good feedback about that. So I, for me, that's where I'm testing, uh, that's where I tested this new Turnitin integration because I knew that they weren't going to have to relearn a system halfway through, or if so, it wouldn't be a big issue for them. But my other class is 120 students, and that's been fine as well. Well, it looks like we're winding down a little bit and we're coming up quickly on 11. So I just want to reiterate my appreciation for all of you coming today and for our excellent panelists um, for coming and sharing all of their experiences. Um, we will be coordinating additional events similar to this in the future. Um, hopefully, by the end of spring, we'll be doing something again so we can share more experiences and also talk about the assessment results as those come out. So we're conducting an incredible amount of assessment around this. We'll have a lot of data, and we will be posting results of that on the pilot website. You can find the URL on the board where I'm pointing or on the handout in front of you. Um, there's also a handout for some additional workshops that we'll be doing in the eighth week of the quarter. We'll be doing both workshops to actually just demonstrate Canvas so you can see some of the features of Canvas in a bit more detail, and workshops just to recap why the pilot is happening, what the timeline is of the pilot. Um, and just generally um, what's going on, what the assessment looks like, and, and how that's going to shape up for our campus. Um, would you like to say anything for me? So thank you again very much, and we'll uh, hopefully have a video to post soon, too.